This is what's called an adaptive jaw vise. This is an antique tool that I got on Facebook Marketplace that uses a mechanism to allow the jaws to individually move to grab odd shaped parts. You can see it here grabbing a tap holder and it's a really cool piece that I'm really excited to have but sometimes it sticks and doesn't work very well so today we're going to restore it. To start out I'm going to have to disassemble the entire thing and very quickly you're going to see what the mechanism that allows those teeth to move is. It's these ball bearings. If you stay to the end of the video you'll see actually a little clip where I put a clear top on it and you can actually see the way the ball bearings move to allow the teeth of the jaw to individually move and lock in place. It's really cool and very ingenious to use the small steel bar ba ball bearings to create that effect. Now the disassembly is pretty straightforward. I haven't taken this thing apart before so you kind of have to learn as you go. Like for instance this rear jaw had a pin that was keeping the two pieces together. Now you can see that I have the vise itself in a plastic bin and I'm using a magnet to pull all the ball bearings out so I don't lose any. And I'm also separating the movable jaw and the static jaw in the ball bearings so that I don't mix them up and put too many in one or the other. The moving, moving jaw slides off pretty easily and then the fixed jaw is actually pinned in place. You can see I'm also rotating a little kind of pin and that's actually what resets the jaws and you'll see that a little bit later once I get it back assembled. Now everything on this is pretty stuck. I can imagine it's probably never been taken apart. And a lot of these pins are tapered, so knocking them out can be a little bit tricky. But once I get them out, I'm able to remove the lead screw as well. And then there's that little collar that's also pinned in place. Overall, the ways are in pretty good shape, but I'm still going to clean them up. And I want to clean up the decals and remove those as well so I can try to reuse them at the end. They're kind of on like an aluminum paper, so it's a little hard to get them off without damaging them. I also want to mention the sponsor of this video is WD-40 brand. I'm going to be using the WD-40 specialist degreaser to clean this part off before I go ahead and get it ready for wire wheel and then paint. I really like this degreaser because it has the smart straw on the nozzle. So you can either spray it in precise kind of small areas or you can spray it in wider areas with the regular nozzle. Now I'm going back and forth with a couple different pin punches here to try to knock out any of the pins that might still be in there to remove all the different roll pins and sort of different mechanisms. Now the tapered pins can be a little bit difficult. Sometimes you have to drill them out. So I had to be very careful not to break anything. Now continuing to clean up the base and just making sure there's really not any goo or schmutz on anything before I go ahead and start the wire wheel. Now on the wire wheeling process, I'm going to be using a magnetic chuck on my downdraft table. And I'm using a series of different wire wheels all from my friends over at Fair Abrasives. Now if you've ever wire wheeled anything, you know that you typically wind up completely covered in the little metal wires as they fly off the wire wheel. I found that using higher quality and a little more expensive wire wheels can make a big difference and keep those pieces from flying out everywhere and make it a little more safer and enjoyable. So the magnetic chuck is really great for this kind of work because I really don't have a great way to hold these parts and still be able to access them. And I know there's some machinist out there that's going to be really upset that I'm using a brown and sharp magnetic chuck to do this. But I got this out of basically a scrap bin, paid almost nothing for it, and it's really great for this type of work. A magnetic chuck works by turning on and off magnetic force so steel parts can get stuck down flat to a table. Now you can see all the different teeth for the jaws also really nicely stuck down and I can wire wheel them, flip them over and make sure they're nice and clean. I don't want to remove any material from any part of this vise. I just want to clean it up and make every part kind of smooth and so that it glides back and forth easy. The other tool I'm going to use here is a non-woven kind of buffing pad, almost like a polishing wheel. And this is just on a single axle, single end motor. And I'll also go over to the wire wheel and clean up whatever parts that I can't use the handheld wire wheel over on the bench. Once all the parts are all wire wheeled and clean, I don't need to get too, too crazy with getting every speck of paint off, but I do need to make sure that I mask off the part really well. I don't want any paint to get any on the smooth surfaces that would potentially cause binding or make it not work as well. I also want to make sure there's no paint inside the ball bearing reservoir because I want that to be able to be filled with oil and not have any debris. So I spend a good amount of time here with just some blue tape and masking is the kind of thing that if you take your time on can really make all the difference and make the whole rest of the project just go smoothly. 
it's definitely something you want to be precise with so that you can avoid having to grind any of that paint off in the future. Now I'm using this little paint shaker on the end of a Sawzall, which is awesome, to shake up this self-etching primer. Now this is going to actually penetrate down into the metal a little bit, and then once that's totally dry, I can go ahead and use some royal kind of navy blue gloss paint, and I'll just give this a couple of coats, allowing plenty of time to dry in between them, and I have that fan kind of pushing air across it to sort of just promote the drying process. Since this tool is going to be pretty heavily handled and probably get covered in oil, I put a couple coats on there just to make sure that it's covered well. Once the paint's dry, I can go ahead and pull off all my masking, which is actually more labor intensive than you'd imagine. Got to make sure that every piece comes off because the masking tape is thick enough to cause a tolerance issue. So now the fun part begins, the reassembly. I'm going to be using the WD-40 Specialist Gel Lube with the No Drip formula. This gel lubricant is really handy because it stays where you spray it. I can spray it on all these different parts, and there are these little shims that actually go in between the jaws, and I think those are just to kind of keep the friction to the bare minimum. And what's nice about this gel lubricant is I can spray it to the side, it stays where I want, and I can put all the jaws together, and everything works. It's a little tedious to get everything placed properly, but once I do, it's pretty simple to get the rest of the rear jaw assembled. I put that little block back in and then I can go ahead and actually put some 3-in-1 oil in there before I fill it with the ball bearings. Now I had these separate so I know this is the exact amount that I had taken out, maybe minus one or two that I got lost along the way, and then I can tighten up the jaw with those allen keys. You can sort of see the action of the little jaws and the teeth now and I use that lever to reset them. I put the jaw in place and then I can reinsert the pins that I had taken out. This has these sort of way guides on the bottom which are a little bit unnecessary considering the pins but it keeps the jaw from racking so I tighten those up. Now when I took it apart I noticed that a lot of this stuff was painted when it really didn't have to be so I chose to leave some of the things unpainted which I thought gave it a nice contrasting look and also you know kind of cleaned it up. I reinsert the lead screw and put the pin back in. Now I can work on the movable jaw. You can see those way guides on the bottom. I just bolt those on, a little bit of grease and lube on everything. I can tighten up the way guides and I put a little bit more of the no drip gel lube on the lead screw as well. It's the same process to reassemble this jaw. I put in that sort of locating pin, the resetting pin if you want to call it that, and then I put a little bit of the lubricant and then a jaw, a spacer, a jaw, spacer, jaw, and so on until I fill the entire jaw up. That last tooth is kind of hard to get in, but I think that tolerance is important to keep the whole thing from racking. Now I don't need all the screws in place to kind of make sure the action is good and then I can go ahead and put the back plate on and fill the reservoir with all the steel balls. Now if you over tighten this plate it'll actually really negatively affect the action of the teeth so I have to be careful with how much I tighten it and at the time I only had three screws but you can see it's working really well. Put that fourth screw in and then this thing is pretty much done. A little bit of wire wheeling on the top of the teeth to clean it up. I can go ahead and put in the little set screws and these set screws actually allow you to lock the teeth in place. Last thing I had to do was try to salvage these decals. I used a metal roller off of my 2x72 grinder to sort of flatten them out and then I used some rubber cement to glue them on. The adhesion on here wasn't great, so I'm not sure if they're going to stick around or if I'm going to redo them. I can bring it back over to my table and give it a test run. What's really nice is that the whole pattern lines up perfectly with my strong hand fixture table, which is really great. Total coincidence. Now you can see the way this thing works. So as you can see, the teeth all move out of the way to contour around whatever shape you put in there, and then you use those levers to reset the teeth and you can grab the next object. Now I made up this acrylic plate, 
which will allow you to see the exact action of the way the ball bearings move out of the way. And it's really fascinating to watch. It's such a simple and intuitive design. And when I first got this thing, I really wasn't sure how it worked. I thought maybe it had hydraulic fluid or something in there, but the ball bearings basically give you the fluid dynamics without the loss of anything leaking out, no seals or anything like that. This is a really great illustration of how those balls move out of the way. Now if I put enough pressure on this, I'm sure I would crack the acrylic plate. It's really cool when all the balls have to be shifted to one side, how they all move around, and especially if you push right down the center, it's interesting how they divide themselves up to the left and right. Overall, I'm really happy with how this thing came out. I'm going to hopefully have it in my shop for years to come, and it's something that I'm thinking about making a larger version of myself. Now that I kind of understand the design, I think it's something that could be replicated. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here at Make Everything Shop, and thank you to WD40 Brand for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.